all right hi everybody welcome to my channel uh, please hit the like button if you like and please subscribe I appreciate it a lot and I thank you for coming okay um, we had uh, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense shared a video clip on Twitter last week showing what appears to be a Russian fighter jet crashing bursting into flames uh, immediately after takeoff in the in the Crimea the Twitter video posted last Monday claims to show a Russian Su-25 crashing after takeoff last Sunday morning the 39 second clip opens with two fighter jets taking off side by side in a field just a second later the jet on the right attempts to make a sharp left turn then drops out of there exploding on impact the estimated cost of each SU-25 is about $11 million a piece. Boy. The fighter jets have been in use since 1976, were deployed during the Soviet, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and Syria. The cause of last Sunday's crash and the fate of the pilot are unknown. Well, my goodness, I bet it's bad news. Nobody could uh, survive an explosion like that. For heaven's sakes. Just, oh, I don't know. It's just one thing after another. And then let's go to uh, this one here. And uh, see if I can move this over without losing anything. Actually, this is the second take of the video. Again. And I can't move it over, which I need to do. And no, nope. hang on, I'll be back. <laughs> there it is. Uh, hopefully I'm still running here. I'm trying to rush this over, not rush it, but get it over. And go back up here to our... Uh, Well, what happened to the one I wanted? Here we go. Oh, I tell you, this is not working out. Okay, how about Hillary Clinton? Let's try this one out. Uh, Hillary Clinton was just caught dead to rights, donating money to a controversial anti-police organization through one of her nonprofit organizations. See if I can move this over here. Uh, this all comes from a Fox News report that exposed how Clinton funneled upwards of 75000 to a far-left group that was focused on defunding the police. The group in question, called Onward Together, which Clinton launched in 2017, attempted to dismantle and up and the Minneapolis Police Department by supporting the Washington DC based Alliance for Youth Action. The group says that the policing system founded on slave patrols and continues its efforts to profile and kill black people in America. Oh my god. The group backs the defunding of law enforcement as a step towards outright abolishment. Oh my goodness, my, 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 my. This ultra left wing group led an initiative to completely tear down the Minneapolis, the Minneapolis Police Department, then replaced it through a ballot, ballot initiative. Fortunately, the voters rejected it in November. Well, God bless the voters. Oh my goodness. As you might expect, much of the efforts were bankrolled by George Sorio's group, the Open Society Center. They reportedly donated about 500000 to the campaign. Other liberal organizations also contributed, including ACLU, MoveOn.org, and others. Clinton's donation to this cause was on top of her Oh my God, 675,000 
donation to other liberal causes with a majority going towards voting right issues. Wow. Well, that's the end of the Hillary Clinton. Oh, my goodness. You know, you, you just can't understand half of this stuff. You really can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All righty. Here's another subject that I looked up. And I got many more to go, believe me. I'm going to look up everything. <laughs> if you hear a noise, it could be the boo-boo. What's the matter with you, boo-boo? Why are you crying? Don't cry. You ain't got nothing to cry about. Get in here. Oh, I don't know. Appearing on Fox News, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy... R-CA spoke out about the White House once again walking back comments from President Joe Biden. During an interview on Fox News, Jesse Waters, Waters, Waiters, W-A-T-T-E-R-S, Waiters Primetime, on Monday, the California Republican responded to the White House, contradicting Biden's statement that the U.S. will defend Taiwan from an unprecedented attack by China. Now that, okay, I have to make a correction, and it was Taiwan. What did I say on that one video? I'll have to go back and check, so I'm going to make a correction here. It's Taiwan. Yeah, I gave the wrong uh, name. I will correct that, yes. Okay, Biden initially made the comments during an interview on CBS 60 Minutes when asked by CBS anchor Scott Pally whether the U.S. military would defend Taiwan from an invasion by China, Biden outright said, Yes, I saw that. Yes, I did. And I think I mentioned that in a video. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented, unprecedented whatever attack the president said during his first interview with an American TV journalist in 2020 days or 220 days. Unprecedented attack. The president said during his first interview with an American TV journalist in 220 days. 220 days, I guess. I don't know. Pally then asked the question again, attempting to clarify. So, unless Ukraine, to be clear, sir, the CBS anchor said, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. And Biden again responded, yes. Now the White House is once again walking back the president's comments insisting that the U.S. policy on Taiwan has not changed and that the United States' official position is to still agree with the One China policy and our commitment to peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. Responding to White House officials, somehow, somehow being able to override and ignore comments by the Commander-in-Chief McCarthy wondered who is actually setting U.S. policy if the president is not in change, in charge, remarking that almost every time he talks about China and Taiwan, the White House has walked it back. See, he's, he's trying to get us in a war. <clears throat> what is his agenda for it? I, I, oh, well. Fox News host Jesse Waiters, W-A-T-T-E-R-S, asked if the White House actions made the congressman nervous. Well, it makes all of us nervous. Why is Biden want war so bad here in the United States? Who's he in? Who's he backing? Who's coercing him to do this stuff? Some just don't make sense to me, but that's just me. You know me. 
Does it make you nervous, Kevin McCarthy? When the White House is constantly walking back, the Commander-in-Chief clarifying what the President has to say, like what he tells you isn't really the policy of the U.S. government. Does that worry you at all? Pardon me, waiters asked. It worries me a great deal. Because who is it then? Mar McCarthy responded. And what is more concerning, not just to America, but who does it say to the rest of the nations? He can't send a clear message. But this isn't the first time he's done this. Almost every time he talks about China and Taiwan, the White House has walked it back. But look at, for the last 40 years, even the Secretary, Gates, said every decision he has made in foreign policy has been wrong. But what does that mean? It cost us 13 Gold Star families because of the decisions he made in Afghanistan instead of listening to his military. Why are they putting him out there? Why are they allowing this to continue to happen? Boy, that's my questions too, and I bet all of us, we want some answers. And I guess that's it for that article. It's just, Biden's trying to get us all killed. There just ain't no way about it. I gotta move my camera over, see if I've got anything else here. All right, now we're gonna go to the WHO who. All right, now this is, uh, this is going to go with the COVID thing here. Who strongly advises the use of two COVID treatments? Now that I don't know, but I got an ad blocking half of what I want to read here, which I don't like. <clears throat> and there's no way I can get rid of it. Alright, no, there's no, you can't get rid of these ads anymore. And they block what I looked up and found as an article to read that would be important to everybody and half of the thing is gone of the article let me see if I can't pull it out here some no that cotton pick an ad and this is breaking health news concerning the WHO WHO which is the World Health Organization See, I can't get it. Well, I guess that didn't do me any good, did it? But I have to keep my camera up and I can't uh, collide them because then the camera will black out. And there's nothing more here I can do about this. Wait a minute. Oh, if I just get my... Now, I don't know if they'll send me another ink cartridge or not, but it would be nice if they would. Well, I've got it so I can get most of it. Two COVID-19 antibody therapies are no longer recommended by the World Health Organization, WHO, WHO, on the basis that Omicron and the variant's latest offshoots have likely rendered them obsolete. The two therapies which are designed to work by binding to the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 to neutralize the virus ability to infect cells, which were some of the first medicines developed early in the pandemic. The virus has since evolved. Mounting evidence from lab tests suggests that two therapies, Sotrovimab, as well as Cassir Viamab and ED Viamab have limited clinical activity against the latest alterations of the virus. I guess that would be alterations. As a result, they have also fallen out of favor with the U.S. health regulator. On Thursday, WHO WHO experts said they strongly advise against the use of the two therapies and patents 
with the COVID-19. Reversing previous conditional recommendations, endorsing them as part of a suit of recommendations published in the British Medical Journal. Now, GSK and partner Ver Biotechnology, Sotrol Iamab, S O T R O V I M A B. Oh, I'm going to learn their language. I'm going to learn it. <laughs> which has generated billions in sales and became one of the British drug makers' top sellers last year, was pulled off the U.S. market by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, in April. Given the United States had begun to question Sotrovimab's clinical effectiveness against the Omicron as early as February, the WHO's WHO Realization is coming a little late, said Penny Ward, visiting professor, pharmaceutical medicine at King's College, London. Now, who has issued this recommendation? It will be interesting to see how many other countries align with it, she said. Regeneron and partner Roche's antibody cocktail, k Mab. I'm D. Vim Mab has also generated billions in sales and was one of the U.S. drug makers' top sellers last year. See, they were just in it for the money. It, it's, you don't even have to pronounce these big words. They're all after the big money. They'll sell anything to you that they can sell to make their big money, whether it's going to help you or not. You know, people that has taken... Those shots, booster after booster, whatever, they still died. They still came down with it, but the reports are, oh, but they don't have it that bad. Well, then why did some still die? Hmm? <clears throat> Back in January, the FDA revised its stance on the treatment, limiting it. Limiting it Use to a smaller group of patents, patients, citing its diminished potency against the Omicron variant. Both therapies continue to be recommended for use by the European Drugs Regulator. Another COVID therapy that emerged early in pandemic was the Gilead's antiviral Remdesivir. The WHO expanded its conditional recommendation for the drug, advising that it can be used in patients with severe COVID as well as non-severe COVID patients at the highest risk of hospitalization. There are a handful of existing COVID therapeutics that remain useful in the fight against the virus, others in development that are expected to also benefit patients. Now this was reporting by Natalie Grover in London Editing by Elaine Hardcastle. So, I don't know. All I can say is just be careful. I never left my home and haven't left my home except once a year to get my blood work done and go see my doctor to get my prescriptions filled. I never got a shot. And I told him. I said no. I don't leave my home. And even though I do go outside, I wear a mask. When, when uh, that COVID was really hot and strong, you know, going good. And um, I put my mask on even going out and playing with the dogs in the doggy pen. I never stepped outside without a mask. And... Uh, I'm fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. Now, when the seasons change, I get a cold. But I've been that way since I was a little itty bitty kid. Yes. Uh, I get a cold uh, summer, winter, fall, spring. When the weather starts to change, it goes with your metabolism. I'm sure there's other people out there just like me. 
seasons change you're going to come down you're going to feel useless uh just want to rest you're going to get the sniffles a little bit of sinus cold maybe but that's all it's going to amount to but that's not covid don't let people say oh my god you got covid and you run to the doctor and get bloated up with all these shots don't do it no that's that's my theory just don't do it you know uh now i wouldn't mind now i seen where uh maybe you can ask your doctor for that old-fashioned flu shot but then again i never got one but one because when i found out it's got all kinds of flu viruses in that shot so your body becomes immune to it and everybody still got the flu <laughs> you know it's not funny but these people are just pharmaceutical companies will rip you a wide open wound they're only after medicare and medicaid money the doctors look how they get paid medicare medicaid and look what they made off of these covid vaccines by giving them oh yeah they got their share don't you doubt it well, of course you know <clears throat> but if you have to be out in public if you work in the public i don't know do what your gut tells you to do follow your instincts but those people that went through all those shots and everything and they still died i don't know i don't know if i'll do another video tonight or not uh, i need to do some research i didn't get on today at all now today was an off day for me uh, autumn has started so uh, i'm probably headed for a little bit of a cold a little bit of sniffles and my nose has already started running you know <laughs> so, but um i might do another one later on because i had a good nap so i'll be up late so i might do another video but god love you shoot your best shot follow your gut instincts that's all i can say say a lot of prayers for all of us for our world for the united states of america and all the other countries in the world for heaven's sakes it's just unbelievable how things are going who would have ever thought people my age would live through something like this you know bye i'll see you later god love you